Welcome back to part two of solving systems in standard form by the equal values method. Now, in the previous video, we had two examples of how to do that. And it could get a little hairy, but I think if we organize our work and make sure that we keep our equal signs in line with each other and keep each little part separate from each other, you are going to do very, very well. And I'll try to add a little color to it, so a kind of color code to make sure it's easier to follow along and to make math very simple for you. So before you hit, hit that like button and subscribe so you can get all our up-to-date middle school curricu curriculum on this YouTube channel. So let's go ahead and get started. What we talked about in our last video is that we have two equations in this system and neither one of these equations are in the y equals mx plus b form or the slope intercept form. So let's go ahead and get them into that form. So our first equation we see is a negative 2x plus y is equal to 4. Now we want to get our little y, keep it here on the left hand side. So that means that I have to get rid of that negative 2x by adding its inverse of a positive 2x on both sides. This will become 0, leaving y by itself, and then I have 2x plus 4. Now this makes it really easy for me to graph. So I could graph this equation because I know the slope and I know its intercept, um, and then I could graph both of the equations and then see where they intersect to find the ultimate solution to this problem. Now our next equation is x plus y equal to 3. Now I'm going to keep the y again, but I have to add a negative x to this positive x to equal 0. And what I do on the left side, I need to do on the right side. So here is my new, my equation in the slope intercept form is y equals a negative x plus 3. So here are our two equations in our slope intercept form that we're going to set equal to each other. So our first, remember y in our previous videos, if y equals y, then 2x plus 4 will equal a negative x plus 3. Because this y is equal to this term, these two terms, and this y is equal to the right side here, so I could set them equal to each other. So let's go ahead and add an x, get all of our x's onto the left. We're going to add an x to both sides. Therefore, we have 3x plus 4 is equal to these two x and negative x becomes 0. And I'm going to bring down my positive 3. I go ahead and subtract 4 because the constants need to go to the right side. I'm going to subtract 4 or add a negative 4 to both sides. Therefore, this becomes 0. Now I have 3x because I brought the 3x down. And 3 minus 4 means that it's equal to a negative 1. This is where it might get a little hairy for you and a little confusing for you. So feel free to rewind this video, go through each step so you know exactly what you're to do. So 3x, we're going to divide by 3 on both sides. And so now x is equal to a negative 1 third. So when we look at our first part of our solution, our solution is the answer. This solution the x value is a negative one third, and now it's our job to find the y value. Now, go ahead and take this x and plug it into one of these two equations. So we are going to plug it in to the second equation. y equals, I should say we put here's the second equation, y equals a negative x plus three. Now this negative, this x is going to be replaced with the parentheses 
But notice I didn't leave this negative off, and I didn't include it on the inside of the parentheses either. So make sure when you are plugging in values for variables that the negative sign doesn't all of a sudden get lost because this value that we're plugging in for x is a negative as well. And so we need to be able to put the negative one third in there. When we go ahead and simplify, negative times a negative is a positive one third. When we simplify this little section in the parentheses, plus three, therefore our y value is three and one third. So the y value is three and one third. The solution is negative one third, three and one third. That looks like it would be really crazy to graph. So that's good that you know how to solve it this way so we don't have to worry about graphing. So remember our y value is here, x value and becomes our solution. Let's go ahead and try one more. As I said, this was a little hairy. It's a little, a little scary for some. So let's get some more practice. Our next, our next equation, here we go. We have 2x plus 2y is equal to 2. We're going to keep our y. We want to save our y, and we're going to get rid of everything else and take it to the right side. So we do that by subtracting or adding a negative 2x to both sides. Therefore, we this becomes 0, and I have 2y equal to a negative 2x plus 2. At any point, feel free to pause the video so you can make sure you have all the notes down that you need. Always what we need to do to get y by itself, we're going to divide by the coefficient. And so under each term, I'm going to divide by 2. This gives me y equals a negative x. How did I get a negative x? Because this is a positive 2, negative 2, a negative and a positive is a negative. And 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I have my imaginary 1, so I have a negative 1x plus one, right there. Let's go ahead and try the next one. Negative four X plus four Y is equal to 12. Keeping that Y by itself, getting everything over onto the other side of the equal sign, I'm going to add four X to both sides. Therefore, I have four Y equal to 4x plus 12. When I divide by my coefficient, I'm going to divide under each term, as I said earlier. Therefore, we have y equals 4 divided by 4 is 1, so I have 1x plus 12 divided by 4 is 3. So now the two terms, and I need to box these two terms that you see here, we can now use the equal values method and set them equal to each other. So let's go ahead and get our negative x plus 1 is equal to x plus 3. So to add, I should say this is positive right here, so I'm going to add a negative, I'm going to add a negative x to both sides. This gives me a negative 2x plus 1 equals, this drops to 0, and I'm going to bring down the 3. So here we go, so add a negative 1 to both sides. Awesome, so I have a negative 2x equal... 2, 2. Divide by a negative 2, as always, and that gives me x equals a negative 1. Let's go back and double check our work, and it's always good to come back here and say, okay, I have a negative x plus 1. I wrote it down correctly, and then I had a positive x plus 3. I subtracted x on both sides. This gives me a negative 2x 
divided by, let's see, negative 2x plus 1 is equal to 3. When I subtract 1 on both sides, this gives me a 2, and then we can go from there. All right, so now we have to find our y value. I can plug it in. I'm going to plug this, this y value right here into x plus 3. So what is a negative 1 plus 3? Well, y is equal to a positive 2. So our solution to this equation, or our ordered pair, is going to be a negative 1, positive 2. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you understand how to convert an equation that's in standard form into the equal values method. And once it goes into the equal values method, I can set them equal to each other to find the solution where those two lines intersect on the coordinate plane. Once again, subscribe to this channel so you have all the updated videos to help you through your math classes. Be sure to share and like and hit those bell notifications so you can be made aware of the next time a video comes out.